Emery stares back at me with hunger, his hand wrapped around my throat a little too tightly. I open my mouth to speak, maybe even to plead, but my voice leaves my throat when I feel his fingers prodding deceptively gently at the veins. Oh no, that isn't exactly what I wanted. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I want to play a game called Eldritch Estate. Thunder rolls. The ground beneath my feet tremble as I stare up at the massive set of doors before me. The mansion they belong to towers over my comparably tiny body, stone walls wet from the downpour. Oh no, am I going to get locked into a mansion full of crazy people again? The place is old, eerie. I should have known better than to expect anything different from a strange inheritance I didn't know about until a week ago. Mm -mm. Has it really been a week since that letter arrived in the mail? My eyes dart down to the drenched piece of paper in my hands. The ink etched across its surface, bleeding and smudging into a barely comprehensible mess. If I squint, I can still make out the important parts. Dead grandmother, my inheritance of her estate, and the address that led me here. It'd be hilarious if, like, no, no, I inherited the, the spooky, scary mansion next to this one. Only now do I bother hoping that this isn't some sort of scam, or a serial killer luring the first gullible person that reads their letter into the woods to kill them. Oh yeah, that could happen too. But for a house like this? I decide I'll take any chances, and finally step forward to knock. Silence. For a moment, the earth stands still, with only the chirp of crickets ringing in my ears. Then, the creak of slow footsteps across hardwood floor are audible, even from the other side of the doors. A lock clicks, followed by a second one, before they push open with an unnerving groan that's almost human in nature. <laughs> a tall, pale man stands in the doorway pushing his gold-framed glasses up under the bridge of his nose before speaking. Oh, hello, sir. We've been expecting you. His voice is deep and pleasant, soothing, even. But the hairs on the back of my neck rise. He must notice my unease, because he quickly adds to his sentence. Pardon me, where are my manners? It is a pleasure to finally meet you, Espoir. My name is Emery's. I was in charge of your grandmother's affairs following her death. Your ears are quite pointy, so might you be a vampire? If so, I'm very okay with that. I've served for years as her butler. In fact, I'm the one who wrote to you about the estate. This house comes with a butler? Emery's almost seems amused by my question. <laughs> As well as a maid, unless you decide to fire us. We'd prefer if you didn't. This house, well, it's home to us. A mansion, a butler, and a maid? <gasps> a house and new friends? I'm beginning to think this is a dream. Please, come in. We can discuss this more inside. You'll catch a cold standing out in the rain. Thanks. I'm freezing. He steps aside, clearing my view of the interior for the first time. I'm alright with this. I'm alright with all of this. To say the place is fancy is an understatement, but the lavish furnishings aren't what catch my eye. My gaze lingers on the welcoming smile that spreads across his lips for a moment before trailing behind him to a much smaller figure. Cute! The maid, adorned in an unexpectedly adorable poofy dress, side-eyeing me with a broom, grasped tightly in his delicate fin fingers. That's a he? Even better! Not too far from him sits what is certainly the cause of many daily messes. <gasps> a pupper! A big brown mutt of some sort, three-legged and a little unkept. Ears perked in curiosity as its golden eyes stare into me. He's got three leggies? That's your, uh, my grandmother's dog? What's its name? I step inside, and Emery's looks anywhere but in the direction of the creature in question. 
<laughs> Tell me what the puppy's name is. <gasps> you mean I got a hot butler, I got a hot maid, and I got a pupper and a house? <laughs> What's not to love? Who cares if it's haunted? I most certainly don't. I suppose she's yours now. Actually, if you want to split hairs, but yes. She unfortunately comes with the territory. That's fine. I'm more of a cat person, but I, w I would take care of the pupper. I, I already know that the pupper is not exactly a pupper, but I would take care of the pupper. I swear the dog glares at him. <laughs> <laughs> he continues, the disdain evident in his voice. Do you not like the pupper, my probably vampire friend? Her name is Lunaria, but we usually call her Luna for short. <gasps> Luna is like one of my favorite names ever for things. I love dogs. Like, I am more of a cat person, but I do like dogs. I like doggos and puppers. I love dogs. Oh. <laughs> Emery's nose crinkles and what I can only assume is slight disgust. I see. Well, I'm rather allergic. Luna's ears flatten, as though she doesn't believe him. <laughs> I'm not sure I do, either. Emrys turns his attention to the remaining member of the household, who refuses to even glance in my direction, pretending to sweep non-existent dirt on the floor with his broom. That's Valerian. Valerian! Valerian, let's be friends! Let's be best buddies and maybe smooch pals! Would that be inappropriate? I don't know. It's nice to meet you. My words come out as more of a question than a statement. He finally drags his gaze up from the floor, but doesn't quite meet my eyes. Call me Val. Okay, Val. You're gonna be my pal. <laughs> He's gonna kill me. Emrys awkwardly clears his throat and speaks up. Forgive him. He isn't very sociable. The two exchange tense glances before looking away. Are you all at each other's throats? Oh, we cannot have that. This is going to be a happy house. I'm beginning to think that no one in this house is particularly fond of each other for some reason. It's getting late. I can show you to your room. But I just got here. I was hoping to have a look around. Emery's visibly tenses. Well, there's always tomorrow for that, isn't there? Besides, you've been out in the rain. You should change into dry clothes. I can't argue with that. I surrender with a nod, following behind him with the bag I packed in hand as he makes his way up the nearby wooden staircase. I'm just happy to be here, folks. My fingertips trail along the railing, a thin layer of dust accumulating on my skin. I imagine that one lone maid isn't enough people to keep a house of this size immaculate. We turn down a dark hallway, and I don't bother to try to squint and count the never-ending doors. Ooh. The upstairs bathroom is here. He abruptly stops, and I'm so spaced out I nearly bump right into him. Your grandmother's old room, your room, is two doors down on the left. It feels as though it's rightfully yours, I suppose. But if you'd rather have a guest room... No, no, I'm sure that one's fine. I really appreciate your hospitality. I wasn't expecting any of this, but I hope that we can all become as close as you must have been with my grandmother. He falls silent at my words. I proceed to the door of my grandmother's former room, my hand hesitating before it touches the doorknob. Despite how wonderful all of this sounds, something still doesn't sit right with me. When I look back at him, I notice for the first time that his eyes are painfully red, like they're glowing in the dim lighting of the hallway, but they can't be red, can they? Reddish brown, maybe, but not red. Maybe I really do need sleep, or maybe he's a vampire, which I'm okay with. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> Grandmama, what have you been getting into? Our exchange is short and stale as I step into my new bedroom. It certainly must have belonged to an old lady. It's befitting of one, at the very least, but it's somewhere to sleep, 
so I don't mind. With a sigh, I toss my still soggy bag onto the bed and fumble through it for suitable nightwear. After a quick change, I find that the bed is just as cozy as it looks and hope I'll drift to sleep quickly. Minutes pass. I can faintly hear the ticking of a clock from the hallway, even through the closed door. I roll onto my right side, then left, right, back onto my back until I'm staring wide awake at the ceiling. The unease that still sits deep in my bones has left me restless. It's probably normal after a move. It's probably nothing. The wind outside my window is howling, three limbs rapping against the panes too loudly for me to ignore. A floorboard creaks, which is when I start mentally convincing myself that the house is just old and there's nothing more to it. The midnight chime of the clock is what finally breaks me. I drag myself out of bed. Maybe I just need to walk to clear my head. Or maybe curiosity is what's killing me. I don't know which is the truth, but I do know that if I don't do something, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Quietly, I open the bedroom door, wincing as it lets out a long, squeaky creak. When there's only silence in response, I assume it's gone unnoticed and slip back out into the hall. Ooh, time to explore my spooky new home. Now where's that doggo? I want to give them some pets. In the pitch black darkness, it looks even more infinite than it did on the way here. I tread carefully, my feet nearly silent against the aged wood beneath them. I count each door, but don't dare to open any yet, instead choosing to make my way back to the stairs. To my relief, I see no one left awake when I reach the bottom. Aimless wandering carries me through the living room until the corner of Maya catches a glimpse of moonlight shining through the cracked open door. I already know it's a bad idea when I approach, but it doesn't stop me. I push the door the rest of the way open to find a study. Ooh. My eyes are drawn immediately to the desk beneath the window, illuminated by the soft glow of the moonlight that led me. Half-melted candles and untidy stacks of books clutter the surface while scattered papers litter the floor below. Judging by the disheveled state of the room, it must be well used. I run my fingers along the spines of some dusty books on the shelves lining the wall to the left, squinting in the darkness to read the titles printed on a handful of them. Shame and Tolerance, The Phantom of the Odium, 69 Shades of Grey, Beginner's Guide to Blood Sacrifice, Cyclopedia Vampira. I want to read all of these, especially 69 Shades of Grey. <laughs> and Beginner's Guide to a Blood Sacrifice, because you never know when you might need that. Wait, what? <laughs> My eyes and hands search the shelves frantically upon the realization that they are almost entirely occupied by various occult literature. Vampire encyclopedias organized by subject, from powers to weaknesses. Let me just read all of those. Werewolf compendiums that I decide to flip through, but quickly close upon seeing fanfiction-esque depictions of reproduction and alphas and omegas. Ah! <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, not like I know anything about that. <laughs> I actually don't. Grimoires and tomes, clearly worn from years of use. Some of them full of spells, while others are dedicated to potions. Now is that describing Val, or is that describing my grandmother? Was my grandmother a witch? I lose track of time as I practically tear the study apart, somewhere between fascinated and mortified by every book I pull from the shelves. I must have been here for 15 minutes, maybe even 20 when a noise from the doorway snaps me out of my trance far too late. I whirl around, the book in my hands clattering to the floor as my entire body enters fight or flight mode at the scene in front of me. Ah! What are you doing in here? Tis my house, blood! I'm gonna poke around! Also adorable! Cute as a button! Emrys levitates inches off the floor, enveloped in dark smoke that's seeping rapidly into the rest of the room. Val's outstretched arm swirls threatening with a purple glow, and a woman with a painfully familiar set of ears and a tail. Luna. 
stands in the doorway, snarling viciously. Guys! Guys! We're all friends here! I'm not given a chance to finish my sentence before Val's magic knocks me off of my feet and onto the floor. Valas! The result is only a dull ache, but it's enough to allow Luna to strike next. She's pinned me down in an instant, and despite my best efforts to wrestle her off, I quickly find that she's way stronger. Buddy! We're all friends here! I'm okay with this! Luna, let me give you some scritches! What should we do with her? Espoir knows too much now. We can't let her go. Fellas! I wasn't gonna go anyway! I love it here! Espoir was bound to find out eventually, though. But how do we know we can trust her? Maybe if someone would just explain what's going on in this darn house, there wouldn't be a problem. That's what all humans say. I don't really have an objection to that one. Luna approaches me, her ears flattened. Aren't you afraid of us? N no, I mean, maybe a little bit right now, but it's not like that. I don't want to be. Yeah. Huh. We're buds. We're gonna have so much fun together. You guys will be working for me. I'll flirt aggressively with all of you. A actually, I... I think you're pretty cool. Just... Just not when you're threatening me. The trio exchange glances amongst themselves, visibly confused. I keep stammering. So, um, if you could just unbind me and explain the truth about everything? As long as you guys didn't have a hand in my grandma's demise, too. Or is my grandma still here and she just wanted me to come live with everyone? That would be cute. Valerian frowns clearly uneager to dispel my restraints, but he does anyway, after an approving nod from Emery's. I rise to my feet, rubbing my wrists where they were uncomfortably tight. Cool. Where do I even begin? It doesn't have to be the long version. You can summarize, if it helps. He sighs. Hmm. If it isn't already exceedingly clear, I am a vampire. Lunaria is, of course, a werewolf, and Valerian is a wizard. No poops. I'm okay with this. All this, this is alright in my book. <laughs> Luna snickers. Emery's isn't a muse. <laughs> your grandmother was somewhat estranged from your family for a reason. From what she told me, she had a supernatural encounter of sorts at a young age. Hmm. Of course, no one believed her, but it spiraled into a lifelong obsession. She was once a member of a prominent group of occult hunters. Fortunately, she had a change of heart and decided to dedicate her life to occult research. Ah. Oh. The three of us met her at some point after that. I suppose you could say she took us in. Took you in? Emrys opens his mouth to elaborate, but Val rudely interjects. They're long stories. The tension between the two of them is thick enough to be cut with a knife. She entrusted all of this to you. Her home. Her research. Even us. But we weren't sure that we could trust you. Or that you wouldn't drive a stake through my heart. I would never, Emrys. Uh. I wish someone would. The sentence is barely even muttered, but it's clear that Emrys hears it. <laughs> what, what, what is going on between the two of you? She hoped that one day her studies could pave the way for people like us to live in harmony with humans. Live in harmony with humans? From where I'm standing, it doesn't even look like they know how to live in harmony with each other. So, what do you say? She extends a hand to me, her tail slowly beginning to wag. Precious. Friends? More than friends. We're buddies. I would be far too alright with all of this. I look from her, to Emery's, to Val, who might just be the least friendly looking person I've ever seen. Maybe all of this really was too good to be true. How can they be friends with me? They've been living here together for who knows how long, and they obviously despise each other. 
Are humans really who my weird grandma wanted me to help them get along with? <laughs> or maybe she wanted me to help them get along with each other. I should run while I still can, but for some reason, I take her hand and give it a shake. Friends. What do you mean for some reason? That's obviously what you want to do. <gasps> Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, what if I try to run? <laughs> My feet were already moving before I could form a single thought or word. By some miracle, I dodged the burst of magic that flows from Val's fingers as I forced my way past the group, <laughs> stumbling back into the living room and finally to the front door. Not gonna, not gonna duck and go, was that some magic? Did they throw some magic at me? <laughs> my fumbling hands try the handle, only to find that it's locked. Uh. My back hits the wall beside me before I even know what hit me. In the darkness, I can see the glint of glowing red eyes and white fangs. Oh no, that isn't exactly what I wanted. Emery stares back at me with hunger, his hand wrapped around my throat a little too tightly. I open my mouth to speak, maybe even to plead, but my voice leaves my throat when I feel his fingers prodding deceptively gently at the veins. Dude! Like a snake, he strikes. Dude! I cry out as his fangs sink into my skin, struggling in vain to break free. Just, just moan loudly and seductively. Make it weird. And, uh, <laughs> maybe he'll let you go. Just make it really weird. All of my strength drains slowly from my body, my vision beginning to darken at the edges when I finally give up. There's something carnal about the way his fangs plunge deeper and deeper as he drinks, but the searing pain advances with the world around me until it's only a dull echo off in the distance, soothed by a gentle euphoria that lulls me into oblivion. Everything fades to black. Did you kill me? In my own home that I just inherited? Rude. Emery's. You're literally just going to go straight for the throat. Literally straight for the throat. Eh. <laughs> oh, oh, and then you're just going to bury me with a, with a rock. Okay. You guys came at me first. I was well within my right to run. Okay, what if I try to fight? I can take them. I can take a werewolf, a wizard, and a vampire. In a fight. Actually, no, I, I probably could. These guys would, like... Tear me apart. I'd be mincemeat. <laughs> but what happens if I try to fight? I'm not given a chance to answer before Val's magic knocks me off my feet and onto the floor. The result is only a dull ache, but it's enough to allow Luna to strike next. She's pinned me down in an instant, and despite my best efforts to wrestle her off, I quickly find that she's way stronger. What should we do with her? Um... Let me go? Espa knows too much. We can't let her go. Espa was bound to find out eventually, though. But how do we know we can trust her? I mean, I was about to throw fists with y'all, but... I decide to take the opportunity to strike back while they're distracted. With a well-aimed kick, Luna is off of me, and I scramble back to my feet, making an effort to communicate, but only managing to say, What the fluff? Emery's scowls, disgusted. You guys came at me. You, you're the ones who started this. I was just looking at books. Ah! Language. Sorry. I grab the nearest book and hit him square in the face with it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, see, now, now I started it. I have started it, and you ripping out my throat will be highly justified. He stumbles back with a hiss, and I make a run for it. Screw this. I'm getting out of here. Restrict us. Cool. The air is nearly knocked from my lungs as magical bindings materialize and tighten around my body, sending me toppling face down onto the floor once again. So much for an escape. The heel of a shoe roughly digs into my ribs, turning me right side up. Nice try. 
I'd make an impolite gesture if my hands were free, but they're not, so I settle for a glare. <laughs> Was I about to give Valerian the bird? Clearly, we cannot trust her. Hey, just maybe don't don't attack me first. Maybe if someone would just explain what's going on in this darn house, there wouldn't be a problem. That's what all humans say. Sorry for being a person. Luna approaches me, her ears flattened. You tried to hurt us. You'll do it again. I, I was freaking out. Luna's eyes burn right through me. Because you're scared of us. Because we're different from you. No, because you attacked me! If the handsomest man in the world came up and punched me in the stomach, goodness knows I'd be calling an ambulance. For him. I... I... Aren't you? No! No, I'm not. No, I mean, maybe a little bit right now, but it's not like that. I don't want to be. What? Actually, I... I think you're pretty cool. Just... just not when you're threatening me. The trio exchange glances amongst themselves, visibly confused. I keep stammering. So, um, if you could just unbind me and explain the truth about everything... Valerian frowns, clearly uneager to dispel my restraints, but he does anyway after an approving nod from Emery's. I rise from my feet, rubbing my wrists where they were uncomfortably tight. Fellas! And lady, listen, I am very okay with everything that's happening right now. Just don't come at me like that. <laughs> uh, what if I say, yes, I don't like you because you're monsters. So, maybe I am scared. Who wouldn't be scared of monsters? Their faces fall. I know I've screwed myself over the second the words were out of my mouth. I see. Oh no, I'm gonna get slashed. Pain shoots through my body as the magical binds tighten. One extends up to my neck, crawling like a tendril, slowly wrapping itself around, but not yet constricting. Mm -hmm. Val stoops down to my level, the cold emptiness in his eyes sending chills down my spine. Yeah, well, you're very pretty slash handsome, and I would have liked to date you. So there... What makes you so sure we're the monsters? Oh no! <laughs> Don't laugh cruelly at my demise! The bind around my neck constricts. I try to gasp, but there's no air. Only painful pressure that I can't pull away from my throat, no matter how hard I try. Aw oh, man! All of my strength drains slowly from my body my vision beginning to darken at the edges when I finally give up. Everything fades to black. Aw, oh, well, you denied the vampire a meal. He probably hasn't eaten in a while. At least give me over to him. <laughs> well, that's fun. That's actually a whole lot of fun. <laughs> this is just the demo, so I will leave a link in the description so you can follow this game if there is any more development. But this, this looks fun. I want to be friends with the monsters. I want to be their friend and maybe date them. And I would love to know what you think about this game, so leave a comment in the comment place, and then there will be a comment there, and then I will read that comment. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to show all these guys the power of the magic of friendship. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.